Hey everybody, welcome back to Gamer Grub, the show that teaches you how to cook, but leaves plenty of time for you to play games while it cooks. I'm Bo. Today we're gonna go over a really easy recipe. I think any of you guys can do this. Just follow the instructions, ah, and you got it. So what is today's recipe? Ha ho, looks like a beef brisket. It's pretty huge. This is a 10 pounder right here, and we're gonna show you how to turn this lump of goodness into a pile of amazement. So sit back, relax, and let's do it. Get some heavy duty aluminum foil and take out a couple pieces. What we're gonna do is crimp the sides together, just like this. Make a line, make another line, and then fold it on top of each other. It'll create a really solid packet for which we can place the brisket in, so that way none of the rub goes anywhere other than on our meat. So what we're gonna do now is just trim the fat. We don't wanna trim all of it. We're just trying to get the hard bits. So the fat will help to add a lot of juicy flavors and texture to the brisket itself. But the big, huge chunks of fat will just contribute to having a big grease slick on the on our uh, juice, which we eventually we'll get to. Uh, and make the brisket eh, a little bit too greasy tasty, which you don't really want to go to. So just trim some of the fat. Look for the big nodules or big, huge, I, I just like the big, hard chunks. If you find a big, hard chunk of fat, just take it off. And all I did there was just score the fat uh, with checker marks, so that way you could get more penetration of the rub into the meat. And let's go on and show you how to do that rub. The rub is the essential spice blend that's going to give a lot of flavor to lift the brisket while it cooks. So we're going to start with one third cup of black pepper and another third cup of kosher salt. One tablespoon each onion powder, garlic powder, chili powder, and one tablespoon brown sugar. Okay, we don't want it too sweet, just a little bit. Then one tablespoon of paprika, some ground mustard, and a little shijimi, which is a Japanese spice, which is really nice. And just add whatever you want. Uh, flavor it how you like, mix it up, and we're gonna rub this guy on that meat. I suggest taking your meat and putting it on a tray, so that way you can more easily transport it to your refrigerator while the rub does its magic. Make sure you put that rub on the front, back, sides, everywhere you can get it. Uh, in the folds, in the cracks, you name it. Put that rub everywhere. After that rub gets on there, close it up. Let's make sure it's on that tray and put it in the fridge. You're gonna let it sit there for about four to six hours or overnight is better. So it gives us enough time to play games. Like, I don't know, how about some Fortnite? Hey, good morning. So let's get this guy out of the fridge because what we got to do before we throw it on the smoker is let it kind of get back up a little bit, a little bit higher at room temperature as well as make sure that the meat itself is dry. So check out this rig I use for that. I think your everyday box fan Take a tray with a cookie uh, razor sheet thing. It basically gets the meat up off of the ground, lets it drip any drippings, and a dry meat means it takes the smoke better. So here it is. So we had to get the, the smoker all set up, and for me, it's really easy. I have a pellet smoker, which just means I put pellets in that left box on the side there, plug it in, and press start. That easy, you get smoke, fire, everything. All right guys, so the smoker started. Uh, as you can see, obviously it's smoking really great. Right here, we're gonna, get, we're gonna go ahead and set the temperature on this. I wanna only do it to about 185 degrees uh, because what I'm shooting for is I don't want it to initially, I don't want the, the temperature to spike so big. I'm not looking to cook the brisket quick. I wanna let the smoke have a lot of chance to penetrate into the meat so we get that really awesome smoke ring. So we'll probably kick the temperature up in the first like couple hours after it goes in, uh, but we'll keep our eye on the temperature because the important thing here is trying to allow that brisket to sit in the smoke for as long as possible. Because if it can sit in that smoke and just suck up all the goodness from that, that's what we're going for. Uh, also, we want to make sure that the outside, it's hot enough where the outside will caramelize just a little bit because then you get that really awesome bark. It'll be on the outside of that uh, brisket. So first uh, stage, 
We're gonna get the brisket to 165 degrees internal temperature. We're gonna pull it. Then we're gonna go to step two. And uh, let's see what happens when we put this guy in. All right, so here's our meat. What we wanna do is uh, we're gonna put it in there, right? We wanna do it uh, fat side down because it's gonna help insulate a little bit uh, against what we got going on here. Uh, you could do it fat side up, but I'd, I would rather do the fat side down because if that stuff renders out, not a big deal. Okay, so here we go. So we're looking for the fatty piece, which is this big chunk right here. That's the biggest piece. That's what I want to focus on for putting the temperature probe in. So this, this smoker has a temperature probe, obviously, because it's amazing. It's got Wi-Fi, all kinds of stuff. Man, I tell you, you really can't, can't go wrong. Okay, then we take our temperature probe. We want to stick this right in the middle of the thickest piece. So that looks pretty good. Uh, this is why I wear gloves. See all the juice that fell off there? Okay, close that guy up. And we can actually check this and see what the food temperature is currently. It says the temperature of the food is 49 degrees. So we've got 165 degrees to hit, guys. So 115 more degrees should take, I don't know, this will find out. We want to start making the sauce because after it comes out of the smoker at 165, we're going to wrap it back in foil and put in a flavorful liquid. In this case, it'll be beef broth with some diced shallots, a little bit of garlic powder. So let that render up and boil, and then we'll just let this chill until the meat is done. So I'm here just playing some Fortnite while everything cooks. And the reason you probably want to get one of those smokers is check this out. Yeah, I'm looking at the temperature right now of what it is out there on the patio. So it's at 135 degrees and I still have another 30 degrees to go. Looks like I at least got two or three more games before I have to take that thing off the uh, smoker. Let's get started playing some games. All right, so our food temperature is now 165. We should pull this guy off. You're gonna wanna use tongs for this, otherwise you're gonna burn the crap out of yourself. So all I have here is the same foil we used for wrapping it originally, but I added an extra layer just in case I poked a hole in here because the uh, last thing I need is my juice falling all over the place, which would be bad. Plus, it's on a tray. Okay, let's get this thing stuffed together. Let's hit the power on this, shut it off. Let's take this inside. We have to get this prepared. We gotta get the juice on there and then get it in the oven quick. Okay, so now we have our brisket here that's ready to rock and roll. What we want to do is kind of roll this up just a little bit, because what we're going to do is take that juice, which we have, we already prepared a little earlier, right here. It's two and a half cups worth of uh, sauce, and we want to pour it on there. Now the kicker here is we want to be very gentle and not try to disturb too much of that crust on the top, uh, but, but we want to make sure there's an even distribution of the onions. So we're going to kind of put that in there. Around the sides. Okay, we're good. Now what we're gonna do is wrap this guy up because, well, we, before we do the wrapping up, we need to put in the temperature probe. So I'm gonna put the probe in the same place we put the last one, okay? Just to make sure everything's good. Now this is a different one. This one goes to the oven thermometer, so it's not made for a grill but we're using an oven anyway, so it's totally fine. See, there's two little holes right here, uh, so it's probably a really good idea that I have a backup piece of foil. All right, so then we take this. It's actually a really good idea to double wrap these things anyway, because uh, what we're trying to do is create almost a little mini oven inside our oven. Try to center it a little bit, and if you need to, just kick it to the side. Uh, and then let's get it in the oven ASAP. Okay, this is stupid hot. Okay, I got 250 degrees. I'm gonna put that right there. Now, you could do it less than 250 if you felt like it, but I wanna be eating by sometime around seven. So that's gonna be about four hours from now. We'll keep an eye on the temperature. And we have this guy right here. Okay, so I'm looking for 
204. Now we just wait. All right, there we go. We now have 204 degrees on our brisket. That is a great time. So what we're gonna do is just, I wanna turn that thing all the way down to as low as it'll go, because it'll be our maintenance temperature, because uh, I, don't, I don't know how long I, uh, <laughs> people will be coming over a little bit later, but not immediately, but that's fine, because you don't wanna serve this thing right away. So it just hit 204. We gotta let this rest for about 15 minutes. We want the, the juices to come back into the meat. It's gonna continue cooking for kind of a while. Honestly, I'd let it go for about half an hour, almost 40 minutes. It would probably be even better to verify, make sure that this thing is totally good to go. But uh, yeah, our little, our little love package here is gonna be really good. So we'll let about 15 minutes go by. We're gonna pop this thing and just see how it looks. And I'll tell you this, if you guys had uh, smell-o-vision right now, you would really, really enjoy life. But since you don't, you're just gonna have to take my word on it. And it is smelling amazing. Yep, just as I thought, the juice fell out uh, to the second layer, so it was a good thing that we put two pieces of, uh, two pieces in there. Yeah, a lot of fat too. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah. Look at that. Let's pull this thermometer out. We don't need that anymore. Honestly, this is just about the best pornography you could ask for. So if you guys are interested in making some of this, check it out. We're gonna throw a couple little recipes together to show you how to make some goodness with this, but wow. All right guys, so here's the, here's the scoop. You've stayed for the whole thing. Hawaiian buns and brisket. It's a pretty magical combination. It's pretty damn good. It's pretty good. So we got Brandon here helping out as our tester. He's yep. gonna assist in the eating and verification that this is not poisonous. Because that's important. Very. Very. So what we're gonna do is just take half of these. So you get 12 in a bundle break off a big chunk, but don't separate them. That's, that's really the kicker. If you separate them, you're gonna have a bad time. Take your trusty knife, bisect your, your rolls right down the middle. If you don't have a good knife, this is an opportunity for you to uh, expand your horizons. Put that in the toaster oven, and we'll be right back. So now let's get to the meat cutting pornography. While our buns are toasting in the oven, we're gonna slice up these uh, wedges and get it dipped in that sauce. This is, this is it, watch out. This, this will get it flagged for absolute levels of pornography here. I don't know what to tell you, but. Oh my gosh, it's falling apart. I can't even get it to keep in nice big chunks, Brandon. Okay, remember when you're cutting brisket, you wanna go against, you wanna have it go against the grain so that way Essentially, you wanna have nice little bits of the muscle fiber, not the big long ones. Otherwise, you're gonna be in for a bad time. No one likes a bad time. Oh no, all those bits is just falling in the juice, guys. You know what that means? That means it's gonna just absorb all that beef broth and shallot and garlic, as well as the remnants of the rub that we had on there. And you know, it might have to do that for about five minutes, Brandon. I know, right? So let's just let that kind of do its thing. Cover it back up with the foil, so that way we don't lose too much of the heat. And then we'll move on to the part of putting it on the bun and then the enjoyment, because this right here, guys, will get you more friends than you can imagine. Okay, so our golden brown delicious rolls. Now, check this out. No, no topping. You don't need ketchup, you don't need mayonnaise, you don't need anything. Put the meat just right on there. Just. Just get it super soaky in the juice. And you know what, Brandon? I think two is fine. Yeah, I think we're good there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about you, but I think, you know, actually there's one little bit. I think we gotta, we gotta add a little meat right here in this corner. Yeah, yeah. Cause that looks a little bit too. Yeah. So look at the smoke ring on that, guys. I don't know if you can see that, but do you see that pink ring all the way around the outside? That means it's amazing. Yeah. 
So here, we'll just finish this up real quick so you guys can see how you do it. You got your cut lines right there. You go right on the side, hold it right on the side, cut them in half, and welcome to paradise because these things will blow your mind. So with that guys, I hope you enjoy the first episode of Gamer Grub. Uh, we're gonna do some more in the future, maybe not as long as this one, but hell, you're smoking goods here. You're not making, you're not trying to make a freaking hamburger, so. Look at that, look at it. Like, comment, subscribe, talk to you guys soon. See ya.